Good morning, everybody. It's Christian from Student Education with the four majors and analysis update for the 10th of July, 2012. Hi, guys. Hope you had a fantastic uh, weekend. Uh, Nikki and I were trade, uh, teaching students yesterday, so there was no video analysis. But um, just having a look at the trades yesterday, very, very flat, very indecisive, not a lot of movement. And um, let's have a look and see what we could expect today. So. What happened to the end of the week last week? Um, let's have a look. A nice bearish engulfing candle, taking us lower than this price swing here, this little support area here uh, that we saw back in early June after that large amount of selling through May. So break below that 12,400 has seen price really low, and we've seen a consolidation range after that bearish engulfing candle. So taking us lower than that area. You can see, oops, just pulled back a bit too far. Um, bit of hesitation on this area in the past. So clear hesitation. So if what we want to see now on the downside is consolidation with a continuation to the downside. And doing so, the next port of call would be these areas down here, 12,900, 12,900. Uh, a fair way away. These are 100 pips between each. There's 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 pips below us, guys is effectively the next target for euro uh, as long as we find resistance now at that 12400 or the daily let's have a look at the daily so that area there you can quite clearly see yeah 1235 a nice little bounce on the daily and a nice break juicy break on friday a lot of selling through that week uh, early june right through into the first friday of the month on from payroll figures all that great and we saw the euro falling slightly on that news so Got to find support, uh, uh, resistance now at this level, 12,500 for the for this week, and in doing so, we could see uh, we, what we would like to see is a nice bearish engulfing candle, a nice engulfing candle of of of, of similar sort, uh, very little wick, more of that confirmation, a lot of uh, the less indecisiveness the better, so hesitation on the underside over here, and then a continuation to the downside. And as long as it finds resistance at 12,3500, then we should be targeting um, areas to the downside, as I mentioned. And ultimately, roughly towards that weekly low, uh, it could be our first port of call uh, on the long-term trades, roughly around the uh, 19, sorry, the 11,900 mark. So quite some some fair distance away. Moving into intraday charts, you can see the low here at the 1225. Depending if you trade the wicks or the bodies, it's entirely your choice. But you can see we had a hesitation here, a clear hesitation in this area. We would like to see a break of that to see any further entries into this um, into this pair. Primarily because now you can see the CTC is still red right across the board. However, on our four hour we got that blue arrow, and you can see we've been trading higher. A break of this little intermediate trend has occurred just recently, swing high, and this candle over here on the last four hours has taken us lower than that. So sentiment finding that resistance. We've got to maintain, see that resistance on a 12.35. Always put your major support, uh, support and resistance levels on your intraday time frame so you are aware of the major support and resistance levels. Uh, so it gives you a guideline of where those daily support and resistance levels are falling intraday. So you can see quite clearly we are trading below it. So now all we need to see is a red arrow. And if that four hour candle here, these two over here, they've caused this lower swing. If those two stay in play, then ultimately that's what. The trend looks like at the moment, so it's going to be forcing us lower, and we could potentially look at that 1225 uh, or the low here at 12.23 as our first target. Okay, our intraday target. Okay, so hourlies, you can see the 50 and the 20 moving together, uh, moving together here. So you can see price is pretty much flat, and you know just dictating that price is really flat at the moment, and uh, 12. So always put that 12 uh, plus. I've forgotten what it is that 12:35. Apologies. Put that 12:35 mark on an hourly. There we go. Just so you guys can get a guideline. Okay, that's our daily support. And you can see we price is trading below that support. And the longer price trades below the support, then ultimately we would like to see it become new resistance. And if that's new resistance, then price should actually fall away uh, pretty soon. So lower swings, lower swing. And ultimately, potentially a, a lower swing here. So you can quite clearly see in the Asian session, a lot of indecision. So you can see Asian session not really moving higher than the 12.32. So not even making an attempt, a failed attempt at those highs at 
35 and which came into call with the, a lot of spinning tops and dojis around the 50 period moving average and subsequently we had this um, negative candle here at 2am on the Tokyo session open falling lower and we've seen price moving lower until this morning at roughly 6 feet, uh, six a.m., then we've seen a slight consolidation. So, as long ultimately this week, as long as it stays below 12,500, we should be looking for shorting momentum to gain, um, to, to to be favoured. So, look for opportunities to the downside. Uh, ultimately, a nice break below that 12,25 would signal a really good opportunity for further shorting opportunities to those 19,900 marks I mentioned. On to sterling. Let's have a look and see what happened last week. Uh, okay, bearish and golfing. A lot of hesitation around the seven, uh, the 15, 1700 mark, which coincided with all the moving averages, and particularly the institutional and the 50, and the 20 period moving average on our weekly. And um, the more resistance found, ultimately, what have, what's going to happen is price is going to move away. And sure enough, we saw that on the daily, the, through the daily sessions or the week last week. Yeah, you can see daily's hesitation yet again through that whole week at that 15, 1700, 15, 7500 the institution moving average above price and in doing so uh, a lot of buying into that area followed by two indecision candles and ultimately the deci decision was to default further to the downside targeting the lows here and in doing so heading into those lows now finding resistance under those lows you can see quite clearly here oops if we can just draw a straight line it'd be great so there we go a lot of hesitation through here then there was that support and you can see price over the past couple of days finding hesitation at that level again. Uh, notice the CTC on our daily very much still red across the board because we are still swinging low. Those swings are getting lower. So swing low, swing low, etc. And um, all our moving averages are above price. Our daily, if we do move away from this uh, psychological 15,500 mark, then we should be targeting that 15,3500. Uh, our daily, the 15,300 would be an ultimate target because that's on our uh, a weekly and monthly time frame is a major support and resistance level, guys. It's a major area where price has actually found consecutive um, support bounces. Notice if you have September, October of last year, uh, January of this year, yet again in early June of this year. So you can see consecutive, there's four consecutive bounces this year alone. There are a number of others going back in the past, but you can see quite clearly that 15,300, a very strong support. So if we see any failure here, a nice bearish engulfing taking us lower, and yes, X candle in particular, around below the 15, 4500 mark, you can be guaranteed that the next protocol will be here at our 15,300. So look for opportunity for shorts to the to the downside on our intraday charts, and wait for those confirmation breaks and trade them to the downside. So that 15, that uh, area here that I mentioned, there we go, that 15,500. You can notice that we've had a price support and resistance level at this time frame, especially on our daily. You could see it quite clearly. And on our four-hour chart, you can see there's a, a lot of hesitation in and around this area. So that becomes a an area of 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 um, support and resistance, and we need to be well aware of it. Another one on our way down towards that 15,300 ultimate target would be roughly around the 15,400, but you can see 15,300 all the way down here. So you've got two potential uh, targets to the downside. Um, here we go. We'll just make this one nice and thick because that's our ultimate target. And you can see 15,500. So there's 100 pips uh, for the first target, second target, another 100. So get a nice break and close lower than that. As long as the price is trading below all the moving averages, and particularly the institution, and as long as our CTC is telling us we should be looking for further shorting opportunities, wait for a nice confirmation break below that 15,500 on our hourly time frame, and then we'll look for the, the ultimate target big down here at 15,400 to start with. Next pair is US dollar Swiss franc. Let's have a look at the weekly and see what happened last week for this pair. Uh, up beautiful bullish engulfing candle to the upside and that taking us above that prior hesitation area around the uh, 9600 you can see prior resistance a lot of indecisiveness above that then a nice break above it clear break above it and now we want to see price heading towards that second or that first goal that we mentioned earlier which was that parity mark around the 1000 mark which actually coincides quite nicely with a prior high or resistance high and a prior support uh, back in 2009 in particular and those November December highs in 2010 so that's a clear definite support uh, uh, target one for long-term trades guys anyone out there trading longer-term stuff and you can see quite clearly that all the moving average bar the institution are 
uh, below price acting support and you can see on our weekly we have our all important CTC strategy template telling us we have a buy 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 okay so ultimately our institution moving average above us at one would be our target so moving to the daily see these highs here prior high at 9700 being broken nice bullish candle we're having this consolidation now we want to see price actually moving higher with a nice bullish engulfing and that would be a clear uh, area for us to get into the trade um, if you wanted to you could potentially look at your fib retracement area so the, the low of this here to the high uh, yesterday's close look for potentially price to find support in and around the 23.6 percent mark um, the lowest it should be going is roughly around the 38.2 which coincides with that uh, pull or the price support and resistance level at 9700 but we should if this is a genuine upside move look for price to find a lot of support in and around the 9700 now where prior resistance was a, a problem now it should become a new support and we want to see a nice bullish engulfing candle to confirm that they've now building on that support and then we should be tackling that all-time high here at the 1000 mark so right above us there quite clearly you can see hesitation in and around that area and a great target one and um, if, yeah, everything for now. In today, don't be looking for any shorting opportunities. Look for any, look for those um, opportunities or areas to gain entry for potential upside. There's our four-hour chart. You can see on the four-hour we have 20, 50 in the institution in order below price as she moves higher. We've had a little bit of a swing uh, upside move over the close of yesterday's session going into the Asian session. We've seen a nice move to the upside, and as long as it maintains above the 9700 on our four-hour or intraday time frames, we should be looking for that positive. We did have a red arrow, however you can see the CTC on the other side telling us that that momentum upside is still looking positive, so we should be looking for opportunities to um, potentially look at the highs here at 98 to start with as a particular target or wait for confirmation break above that 98 before we look at that ultimate high for the remainder of the week around the 1000 mark. So you can quickly see I've drawn a extension for retracement area from the low and then the buying all the way through July to these highs over here. And you can quite clearly see that our 23.6, which would be our first pullback, plus has even made any uh, move towards it. You could, however, look at this move over here as the first part of it to the high. And you can see that our 50% retracement area has been reached. And you can see price is now building momentum above that. But most importantly, as long as price remains above this 9700, we should be looking for nothing more than actually buying or uh, entries to go long for this pair. Last pair of the day is the US dollar Japanese yen. Let's have a look and see what happened on the week last week. Okay, very indecisive. And particularly price playing cat and mouse with the 80, 80 here, which happened to be a major support and resistance level in the past. Noticeably, that breakout that saw prices heading towards that 8400 mark, which was a very clear support and resistance level or target one for any long term traders. But we fell to that hurdle, that first hurdle, the breakout of the 80, finding support chain, moving higher on the weekly, but straight into the 8400, and then we had this tweezer top, uh, bullish, followed by bearish uh, engulfing, so one cancelled the other, uh, we call them railway tracks or tweezer tops, and then price reverted into the downside. We were looking, we were hoping to see price actually maintaining, or f maintaining this bullishness and finding a bit of support chain, and re-attempting these houses, any prior breakout you want to see a pullback and then confirm support before we see a, a second attempt or movement in the direction of the breakout that failed to materialize as we went into the 80 the support here a lot of indecision and then the decision ultimately was bearish and we moved lower towards the 78.6 fib retracement area from these lows we saw in february so if i take my february low to the high here in mid-march and plucked uh, the downsides Retracement errors, you can quite clearly see if I put in a 78.6 foot extension now, you can see quite clearly price moving towards that. But then building on that momentum to the underside. So in this case, breakout, pullback, and now we want to see price moving in the direction of the overall trend. We saw price moving higher uh, on, on, on a daily chart, however, not failing to find any further support as we intended price uh, to do once again over here. And we went to an indecision candle uh, uh, week. The prior week and this this week, the side of this week, we've seen a bit of selling. So on the daily chart for uh, the US dollar Japanese yen, you can quite clearly see here the 80, a major support and resistance level. So you need to put these these levels in, make them nice and thick, so you can clearly see where there's a major support and resistance. So 80 was a uh, very clear one, and then it, uh, another one at 84, as I mentioned. So you have your high on the chart at 84 is a major support and resistance. Clearly, look at the indecision. 
spinning tops, dojis, and the shooting star uh, that followed at this level. Clear indecisiveness followed by decision and price fell away. So here, the longer it trades above something, the more likely it is to continue to the upside. The longer something uh, trades below a price of one resistance level, the more resistance is more likely to favor, and the ultimate, uh, ultimate, um, the ultimate will be a break to the downside. Uh, you can see clearly here a full week of indecision, a lot of very small trading ranges uh, for these days, a lot of wicks on either side, so telling a lot of indecision at the underside of a major support and resistance level. And notice the CTC bar one day, and you can quite clearly see that one day when the CTC was blue, it was indecision at the underside of support. So would you be taking along there? Uh, I don't think so because it's an indecision candle, you want a decision, and that was your decision. So if you saw that decision, um, on the 6, then you should be looking at opportunities to the downside. You can quite clearly see swing highs into this, a nice squeeze pattern. I mentioned to our students yesterday uh, over the weekend, and sure enough, it's like a tube toothpaste. Take the lid off, and you're squeezing on it very hard. It's going to spurt. It's going to go all over the place. And in this in this case, because we are in a negative trend at the underside of a major support and resistance level, the ultimate target is going to be to the downside. So as it stands now, we should be looking potentially at targets towards the 79. 100 year back towards the institution. Ultimately, the prior swing here at 78. Ultimately, our goal is going to be if we see a break below that institution moving average, our goal for the foreseeable future is going to be 78. And 78 being a major support and resistance level in the past. You can quite clearly see here through August, September, October, November, December, January of last year, 2011, a lot of hesitation. A lot of uh, candles that are broke uh, above. These were intervention candles. Uh, Japanese government jumping in trying to intervene. But you can see 78, a clear area of support and resistance. Okay, get below 78, then we go back into this consolidative range, and we don't want to be heading towards these areas down here at 7550 because you can ultimately guarantee that the Japanese government's going to start intervening yet again. We saw a lot of intervention through 2011, and the, there are reasons why the Japanese government doesn't want the US market or the US dollar to be. Uh, very very weak against its currency pair. So as it stands now guys, notice the CTC very much red. So look for shorting opportunities intraday and look for potentially potentially as your first target. You can quite clearly see here a break below all this consolidativeness that we've seen just recently is a support through here. You just get a nice straight line. You can quite clearly see get below this area here at 7950. Uh, then we should be looking for opportunities down towards 79 and then ultimately down towards our 78 mark. That's it, guys. That's it for today. That's the analysis for the four majors this morning. Have a look at any news announcements today, guys, on Forex Factor or any one of your news, uh, your, your news um, blogs. We had trade balance figures from uh, China came out very, very positive. Previous figure was 18.7 billion. They were forecasting a, a positive figure of 22.6 billion, and it came out 31.7 billion, guys. Jeez, that's a huge. That's almost double. Um, that's uh, that's that's crazy. I wonder who the hell is doing import and export with China because uh, every country out there is bloody broke. So it's got to be one of the emerging countries like India, maybe um, Brazil or something. But who knows? Uh, maybe filling the books again. Um, but that's a massive, massive positive figure for the Chinese trade balance figures. Then we got uh, 7:45 GMT this morning. French industrial production month and month figures, um, which should be out. Let's have a look and see. Yes. Uh, forecast was negative 0.9%. Uh, the prior figure was positive at what? Well, negative. It was 1.4%. They're expecting a positive of 0 0.9, and it came at a negative 1.9. So French production month and month figures. Uh, crap. Excuse my French. <laughs> um, so yeah, not producing quite a lot. Peugeot's must be in the dung. Uh, Italian. We have the next one, which is 9 a.m. GMT. We have the Italian industrial production month and month figures. Uh, these are small markets, guys. The French, pff, the Italians, very small markets. Uh, once really, really watch when it comes to production figures, it's going to be your, your, your Germans. Um, but as long as Italy has a positive one, that means that at least there's something held, you know, working. And but we all know that Italy, Spain, they're all under pressure. Uh, it remains to be seen if we get a nice positive figure from those production figures. Uh, lots of slowdown in those countries. Uh, negative forecasts. So 9:30 GMT this morning. We have the sterling manufacturing production figures uh, for the UK market, and they're looking at a 0.1. Uh, 
percent. The, the previous figure was uh, previous figure was negative uh, 0 0.1 and expecting 0.1 percent, so a, a positive one, a small jump, but still yet a positive. If it comes out higher than 0.1, happy days. If not. We could see sterling taking a bit of a battering. We have the trades balance figures, which is an important one for sterling at 9.30 as well. So very, very important um, numbers coming out for the UK as well as the European session this morning. Hang tight. Let the markets uh, uh, digest the news and then look and see exactly where it's taking them. And then we can trade that that that, that the news uh, announcement. So uh, this afternoon, what do we have? Housing starts with Canada and... Uh, GDP estimates for sterling later this afternoon, 3 p.m. GMT. So, not a hell of a lot this afternoon, but this morning we do have something. So, keep it in mind. Be aware of it. Okay. If you're not in any trades, rather wait for that news to come out and then wait and, and, and see where price is taking um, um, after that news announcement. But until then, make sure you follow the rules of this, of this template if you are using it. If you are trading any other templates, please ensure that you follow the rules of what's required, back it up with sound money management, and most importantly, keep it simple, guys. Simple as, as possible, follow the rules, and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Until then, trade serenely.